Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. We're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop, and we're going to be talking about a Silver Cloud 3 engine and a crack block. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too bad. Like I said, this was a good running engine. It just had that coolant leak. What kind of a coolant leak was it? Was it just a constant minor? It wasn't a. It would leave a little puddle when it sat, uh, and when it was running, it would, it would trickle. Yeah. So it was enough. He says, well, can I just drive it? I said, well, you can, but you better not run it out of coolant. It's going to get worse. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine much worse than... So he was rolling around with a cracked block. Yeah, but it's, it's probably because it sat so long. And it might have got hot once. Mm. <laughs> all right, let's get the valves out. So the reason I laid all these springs out is one thing that can happen on cars, especially that get hot, is the springs will get hot and collapse. <coughs> and then when they collapse, they don't have proper tension to close the valve quickly enough. Exhaust valve. See the difference yeah. on the carbon buildup? This has oil and then vacuum, and this is on its way out. It's going out the exhaust system. And it's wet only because it's been in the parts washer, so I wouldn't worry about that. But then we got some definite carbon building up there. They, they had regular. Ooh, that, one, that's, that one's been sucking some oil. Look at that. The nice thing about these YouTube videos is he edits so much of this stuff out. <laughs> he has to. And then, when I'm doing something mundane, like taking screws off of something, I'm the bionic man, because I move so fast. Oh, look at that one. That one wasn't doing, is that the one that came out of? Yeah. No, that's this one. Look how small that is compared to the other one. It was tired. Let's see this one. Yes, this is the one yeah, with that's the... Yeah, going to be the heavy. Oh, it's down there. <laughs> wow. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it looks the same. Look at that. Another small one. So you'll replace all these? Yeah, I'll probably put rope packings in there because there's so many things right here that's, that's good. The fact that it was running great. Oh, God. And you'll reuse all the valves? Yeah. You clean these up. And then you put them on a machine and you grind this angle. There's a machine that you do with a wet wheel. It's 45 degrees. Do mm -hmm. uh, you check the spring tension on these? I, I, I look at the height. This is not a high performance engine. And just, I've been doing this so long. If I see some that are short, then I might, but I'll just replace them usually. Uh, this is not a high revving engine. So, yeah. Yes, the guides are replaceable. So one thing you want to look at on the guides, these are the guides. These uh, are driven into the uh, uh, cylinder head, which is aluminum. Some are cast iron, some are bronze. Uh, is the height. Typically on a car that's kind of tired and been warm, they'll drop. Hmm. So, because the aluminum expands so much yeah. that it allows it to slip down. Uh, you can look at the height there, you can look at them in here. Uh, you can see this doesn't look too pretty. 
a lot of this is just from our washing machine. That's just regular oil that's been kind of mixed. They didn't wash it very well for me yet, yesterday. Um, but these are all standing the right height. And so it's just a visual, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's the the other thing that's really important is how much clearance is in here. Okay, so you rock them. So this one I can I can't even hardly yeah, rock this. Just, when when the guides are worn, they worn out in they wear out inside, so they let this do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this kind of thing can be easily determined just with a vacuum gauge on the engine when it's running because it'll wiggle. Interesting. Yeah, it's vacuum gauge is an amazing diagnostic tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what it tells you because okay. they're not always sealing properly, so you get a little pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so what we'll do is, first of all, we'll just clean everything. You know, we'll get this good and washed up. Uh, we will be blast these areas so it's nice and clean again. Clean these valves. I don't typically, I'll be blast them, but you stay away from this up here. Okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, then you go and you check how much, if we, if we got any of them that are rocking more than a couple thousands, then it's usually best just to replace the guides. You can knurl them. Uh, which is what knurling what what you're doing is you're going inside that that sleeve that this rides up and down in you use a bit that it's a knurling bit and it's kind of like a uh, thread chaser and you run in there and you you actually cut threads in it and when you cut threads the metals displaced so it shrinks the hole and then you put a um, uh, burnishing tool in there and you push them back out to the right width Huh. And that's a good way to do it if, you know, the guides are expensive, which they are. The factory guides are very expensive. They're about, I think the exhausts are like 120 and the intakes are like $80 each. You multiply that by eight mm -hmm. for everything. Um, and that's a good way to just kind of get one by. Um, or like I said, at my machine shop, he will put brass guides in it. Um, um, he'll he'll uh, press them in there and then he'll machine them to fit. And then we'll machine the tops and get rid of these so that those modern seals go on. This one is so original and in good shape that I'm just going to put rope seals in it. Yeah. Just clean it up and, and put rope seals in it. Um, do you make sure that all the valves go back into the same holes when you put them together? And then... Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. Let me see if I can read it. Well, my... These, when they're built at the factory, are actually numbered. And they weren't put back in the same holes. <laughs> Just so you know. This looks like a B3 to me. Can you see a B and a 3 there? Yeah. So that should be, this is cylinder, this is the B bank. So it should have been in this hole. This is B3. And it was in B4. So whoever did this last valve job on it didn't know that or didn't care. So you can, it's not as critical as the lifters. Nowhere near. So this coolant leak turned into a, we'll put rings in it and we'll do a valve job. Good use block, new seals. Basically everything you should do when you tear down to that point. Um, that's the minimum, yeah. yes. When you pull the pistons out with the rings, you always want to do the rings. Yeah. You want to hone the cylinders and the, when you hone the cylinders, what you do is, is you take, I use a ball hone because it's, I'm not doing uh, precision honing. Uh, and it just scuffs up that um, the cast iron sleeve in here. Yeah, what it does, and you're supposed to do it so that you get a 45 degree, so you've got to do it fast with oil and all that kind of stuff. And what happens is the rings, which are cast iron pieces, they, when they slide on there, with it, they'll wear in. And they'll see it. Yeah, the hose to get rid of the legs, right? Yeah. That's the idea, yes. Now, when we had this uh, old 2025 apart, that the guy, it's a long story, but he got sold this car, basket case, uh, <coughs> and he took the engine or the pistons and camshaft outs to prevent corrosion. Um, so when we got it apart to put the pistons back in, first of all, the pistons were junk. 
corroded to hell. And we ran a home through the cylinders, and they were just dead. Big old scores in them. Um, and you don't always see that when they're, they're like this. The scores you can, but then there was a huge lip. Where the, a lip is usually near the top, because when your piston's going up and down here, oh, see how tight it is? Yeah. It doesn't like that lip. So typically, the piston will come to the very top, OK? And it goes up and down, right? And you'll see inside this cylinder, if you look inside there, See how it's discolored up to about that point? That's this part right here, above the ring. So that's the firing zone. It's going to get that discolored. But the ring only comes up so far every time. And what happens is with, with wear, then it, it wears it out at the top. So you will actually feel a lip there. And people use ridge cutters to fix that, but that just means you need to board or, or replace a sleeve. They don't make oversized Rolls Royce pistons. You replace the sleeve, obviously. Um, so. That's it. Thanks for coming.